Hi everyone and welcome to the Stitch Sessions. In today's tutorial, we are going to work on making these really cute and quick mask helpers or mask adjusters. I'm sure you guys have seen these all over YouTube and in fact, I've been commissioned to make some so I thought why not share with you guys how I make mine. So you can make them in whatever lengths that you like. So you can see with this one here, I did it a little smaller and then this one, I made it just a little bit longer and that way um, you can kind of adjust things as you go along. So here are all the materials you're gonna need to make these a really quick projects. Um, any bit of scrap yarn will work just fine. I really recommend cotton and I recommend 100% cotton because these are gonna get a lot of use, you're gonna be taking them a lot of places. Uh, cotton is fantastic for just being able to throw them in the wash. It's a very durable uh, yarn. So that's what I would recommend. You will also need um, a pairs or several pairs of buttons. Now these buttons that I have here, I just had some buttons kind of lying around. They are okay, but I really feel that they should get slightly larger, right? So right about there. So that's the size. Now the only thing is, is this is the only one I had left in this size. And to be honest, I just didn't want to go and buy a whole new a bag of buttons just for a couple of these sizes. So this will still work just fine. You see, it can you can hook the uh, the mask strap around there just dandy. So you will need some buttons, of course, a pair of scissors, and the hook I'm going to be using for this project. It's a four millimeter hook, also known as a G or a size six. Now. Uh, I'm using a smaller hook because I, I do want the stitches to sit a little bit tighter because I want to create a little extra durability and strength. Um, so that is, I actually would really recommend using a four, um, you can do a 4.5, but a smaller hook for smaller stitches and durability, I think for this project are the way to go. And lastly, what you're going to need is you will need a darning needle to sew in your button. But here's the thing, this is a yarn needle, and as you can see, the eye of that needle is pretty wide. So for yarn, it's fantastic, but if you're trying to then feed the yarn through your buttonhole, like this, for example, you see, that's not gonna go through. So what I recommend is that you actually use a regular sewing needle, okay? So you can see it's much smaller and it will fit through my buttonhole just fine, okay? So again, I'll just put the two close to each other so you can see the difference there. So you might have to just kind of be patient when feeding your yarn through, but this uh, sewing needle is gonna be the way to go. All right, guys, so uh, let's get all of our materials organized here and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to begin by placing a slip knot on our hook. And what I'd recommend you do is this first tail here, I would leave it a little bit longer because we're gonna use that to help you sew in your button on this end. So you can leave that a little bit longer and then place a slip knot on your hook there. And we are gonna begin with a foundation chain row first. Now, in these two examples here, for this one, I did uh, a set of 15 chains. For this one, I did a set of 17 chains, okay? So again, depending on the length that you like, if you find that the uh, straps, maybe they're a little bit shorter, uh, you might wanna do one that's a little longer so that the straps can reach over. If you find that, you know, if you have a homemade mask and maybe the straps are a little bit longer, then you might want to make yours a little bit smaller in order to kind of really make those straps work. So this is why I recommend making several of these and uh, doing them in different sizes so that you have uh, different adjustabilities on hand. The other thing you can do is if you make this one was 17 stitches like I did, and you're all done, you got your buttons in, and you're like, oh no, it's actually too big, 
An easy, easy fix is just add another button and then it's truly going to be adjustable. So if you put it on the first button here and it's like, it's not really helping, it's not staying, you can put another button here or even several. And this way for different masks, your mask adjuster will be adjustable to any mask. So that's a quick and easy fix. Now for this example, I am going to do 17 chains. Okay. So we're just going to begin by yarning over. And, you know, for the initial chain, remember, we don't want them to be too tight because we're going to work twice into these chains. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a moment. But for the rest of the project, it'll actually be okay to be a little bit more snug with your stitches. But just for now, just keep them fairly even. 16 and 17. So my initial chain looks something like that. Okay. Oh, the other thing I forgot to tell you guys is that you may, you want to have a couple little safety pins on hand or stitch markers, just if, it, if you find that um, you need to help hold your place. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Okay. Uh, but you can also use a piece of yarn, like you can use anything to mark your stitches. Okay, so I've got my 17 stitches. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the second chain from the hook. Remember, we never count the loop that's on the hook. So we're gonna go one and two, and into that second chain, we're gonna place a single crochet. So you're just gonna pull up that loop and pull through both of them, okay? And then right off the bat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one more single crochet into that same stitch. Okay, so insert and pull through. So we've got two sitting in that single crochet right now. Okay, and then what I want to do is I'm just going to get my little safety pin here. This is going to mark the very first stitch I did here. Okay, just as a reminder, and later on, you'll see why that's handy, okay? So now I'm gonna move on to the very next stitch, and I'm gonna insert my hook, and I'm gonna place one single crochet. And that is what we're gonna do for all the stitches now. We're only gonna place one single crochet. So again, insert your hook first, pull up that loop, yarn over, and pull through two, okay? So into each and every chain. Okay, so you have something that's starting to look like that. So go ahead and do that all the way to the end and just stop before your very last chain and I'll meet you there and I'll take you through what we're going to do. Okay, and I have one stitch left. Now up until now, here's the total of stitches you should have. Okay, so I just went into my second last stitch. So I currently have 16 stitches altogether. Remember, we did two at the beginning. And now what we're going to do is we are going to place three single crochets into the very last stitch. So we've got one. Then we go back into that same stitch, place two. And now we're going to do one more which is three. And hopefully you can see that it has taken us right around the bend there. And that's exactly what we want because now we're gonna continue to work along the bottom of that chain row, okay? And so that's why now we will be working in the round here as opposed to back and forth, okay? Now, before we move on, a couple of things. Remember that long tail? We don't want to work over it. A lot of times you'll see me hide my tail by working over it, but we actually just want to kind of put it to the side because we are going to use it later. And then the other thing is we need to place another stitch marker here. So I'm going to grab my little safety pin. Okay. And now not into the stitch we just finished, which is there, but we're going to go into this stitch right here. So that was the second stitch of our set of three. Okay, so now what happens is we can now see that we've got um, a stitch marker on each end stitch of our rounds. Okay, 
So now we currently have 19 stitches in total. And we're going to continue to go across the way here until we get to the very last stitch. So we're just going to continue doing what we did previously now. We're going to go into the very next stitch, which is right there, and we're going to place, whoops, we don't want to get that tail in there. We're going to place one single crochet into each stitch. So now it's just that we're working along the bottom of those chains. Okay, just like that. So go ahead and do that. And I'll meet up with you guys when you have one stitch left. Okay, so I have one stitch left. Now remember this stitch right here, remember how we did two at the beginning? So this is actually the last free stitch we have. So I'm gonna do a single crochet, whoops, insert your hook. And now into that stitch, because we only did two, we're gonna insert one more back into that. So see how the stitch marker is there? We're gonna insert one into here. So that way, this will have three stitches. This last end here, see how that rounds up so nicely? Because remember, up here, we did three stitches. So now we've got this really cool rounded edge here. And where that stitch marker is, just going to take that out for a second. We are just going to slip stitch to join. So we're going to insert our hook and pull the loop through both loops. Okay, just like that. So that's the end of round one. And now you can see hopefully that our initial chain rope is now kind of like, it looks like the spine of our work. Okay, so it's, it's nice and snug. Okay, so we only have one more round to do, so here we go. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to chain one, and now back into the same stitch we just slip stitched into, we're gonna place our hook and do one single crochet. Oops. Okay, just like that. And what I wanna do is I just wanna replace my stitch marker into that one and that's going to be this is our very first stitch and it's the one at the very end here and now we need to continue coming up around the corner so to speak so in the very next stitch we are going to place two single crochets okay and it's just in this spot so on either side wherever you see that stitch marker so in this case we have the stitch marker on this side, I'm going to place two single crochets, and when I come back around on the stitch just before the stitch marker, I'm going to place another two single crochets. What that does, it just helps us kind of round out that corner, so to speak. So once we come down here, I'm going to do the same thing. The stitch just before this one, right, so it's going to be this one here, I'm going to place two single crochets. Then I will only place one into the stitch marker, and then on the other side of the stitch marker, I will place two again. Again, just to help us round it out, okay? But other than that, we are now gonna continue on as before. So we're gonna go into each stitch. So now the stitches should be a little easier to see. And we're simply gonna place one single crochet. Easy peasy. That's why, like, you, you should be able to whip up quite a few of these in no time at all. Okay, now go ahead and do that and I will meet up with you in that just when you have that last stitch left before the stitch marker. Okay, Okay. so here I am. I've got one stitch left and then it's the stitch marker. So into this stitch I'm going to place two single crochets. Okay, and now I'm just gonna take this stitch marker out and into that stitch, I'm only gonna place one single crochet. Whoops, sometimes cotton yarn can be a little bit splitty. There we go. And before I forget, 
actually. And we don't need to worry about the stitch marker anymore because we're not doing any more rounds after this. So now into the next stitch, we're going to place two single crochets because that is the stitch that was on the other side of your stitch marker. So now we go back into that same stitch. See? Now we've come up around the bend there. And now we continue on as before and just place one single crochet into each stitch. So you know what to do. Go ahead and do that and I will meet you again when you have that last stitch left before the stitch marker. Okay, we're just at the end here. And I've got one stitch left before the stitch marker, so I'm gonna place two single crochets in this very last stitch here. One and two. Okay. And, and now we're just gonna take that stitch marker out and we're just going to slip stitch to join. And guess what guys, we are finished. See, cute and quick. Okay, just like that. Now what you wanna do before we snip off is just leave a little bit of a, of a longer tail. Just something like that. And then we're just going to pull that through and pull tight. And there we have it, short and sweet. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention is at the end of your first round, if you did it exactly as I did, you would have had 34 stitches all the way around. And then we chained one and then we added an additional four stitches. So you should have 38 stitches all the way around. But here's the thing about this mask adjuster. If you ended up having 33 or 35 or at the end you have 39 or 40, it's not the end of the world because um, it doesn't affect kind of the, the job of this project. So do not fret. And it's normal. Sometimes, I mean, I've done it too, where I've miscounted or I've skipped a stitch or added a stitch. So please do not worry, okay? It's still going to come out fantastic. Okay, final touch is our buttons. So here's what we're going to have to do. Pack a little bit of extra patience because remember we're going to be using our sewing needle here. Okay. And so let's thread that through. And I just want to really get this nice and together here. And ever so slowly, there we go. Feeding my yarn through. There we go. Lucky on the first shot. So you'll see at the end here, so where we fastened off, for example, it's right at the end. What I want to do is I want to probably bring it right where we had that last chain there at the beginning. So I'm just going to go in through the top of this next stitch here, and I'm just going to feed it down and back through there, right where that opening is. Okay, just like that. Okay, so it just kind of helps it blend in a little bit more to the end. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed it up through there. And I'm going to take one of my buttons. <clears throat> okay, and I'm just going to place that like that. And then I can pull that through. And this first one, you'll gauge kind of where you'd like your button to sit. Okay, so you, you kind of do want them to sit, you know, close to the edge. They don't have to be right on the edge. You also don't want them too far in, but, it, you know, in reality, it doesn't matter because as long as you can get that strap over with ease, you're A-OK. -okay. So I'm pretty happy with where mine is right about there. And then I'm just going to find the next hole there and insert and go through the back. And so now you should see that it's gonna to start to um, really secure itself. 
There we go. Okay, and then I just kind of feel my way through somewhere close to the back. There we go. So it's coming up the other side, just like that. And I'm going to feed it down through. Now, if you decided not to use yarn and you decided to use um, thread, you could probably do this several times. But because this is yarn, I'm most likely not going to get a couple of rounds through. So I'm just going to do that twice like I just did. And then I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to just weave my end there back and forth a few times. I'll even kind of do one with a knot to really secure it. Whoops, just lost it from my needle there. Okay, just like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go back this way and maybe go through there. You wanna do this at least three times. I mean, sometimes I'll just kind of, before I tighten it, I kind of loop it through. So it's, it's knotting itself. I have been known for doing it more than three times just because I like to really secure things. But generally speaking, three times back and forth is enough to lock in the fibers. So you should be a-okay. I'm gonna do one more here, just like that. And we are good. Okay, I lied. I think I'm gonna do one more there. Right there. Okay, great. So then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna snip off your yarn and you are done. Just like that. And there you have it, okay? So you're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. So remember we left that tail here. So this one is perfect because it's already in the spot we want it in. So um, just go ahead and do that the same way I did this one. You're gonna feed it through your needle, place your button where you want it to be and you are good to go. So go ahead and finish that and I'll meet you when you're done. Okay guys, and here are my mask helpers. So I've done a set of three because that's what I've been commissioned to make. And uh, actually, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen a sneak peek of these guys. But um, it, and by the way, if you aren't following me on Instagram, we are at The Stitch Sessions. Make sure to stop in and say hello. So there we are, cute and quick and very useful. We have our mask helpers, I like to call them. Some people call them adjusters or stretchers. But there you are. Hope you found this super easy, a great way to practice basic stitches. And if you're a super beginner, this is also a really great, useful project that you can create. Thank you so much for coming along, guys. And if you enjoy these types of tutorials, make sure to give me a thumbs up because then I'll know to keep making these types of um, projects. And if you haven't pressed that subscribe button, please go ahead and do so. That way you'll always stay up to date every time I upload a new video, which is every Wednesday morning. And remember, they're absolutely free. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. Now, why should you do that? Because in every edition, we always have a free written pattern there. And uh, also, by the way, if you'd like to check out any of our other patterns of some of our other projects, we do have an Etsy shop and we are Crochet Crafty Canada. So make sure to go and check that out. And if you have any questions, as always, please do feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box down below or just email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. In the meantime, guys, have an amazing day. Happy crocheting and take good care. I'll see you guys in the next session. Bye.